In the later part of the 1800s, Cincinnati had its own small Montmartre, a strong community of artists on the upper end of Vine Street. One group of artists gathered informally at the studio of John Redding in 1883 as the Cincinnati Sketch Club. This loose collection of artists became the Cincinnati Art Club, formed in 1890, with the purpose of advancing the knowledge and love of art through education. It is now the second oldest continuously operating art club in the United States. Tonight, we talk to Kay Wurz, former president of the club, and Marlene Steele of the Cincinnati Art Club about the club's activities, histories, exhibitions, and some hauntings. So join us for a wonderful episode. Welcome to the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities Hometown Haunts Podcast. I am your host, Kat Cloco. Tonight with me in the shadows are Jen Kohler, Christina Wald, and our wonderful guests. But before we get to them, we have a few social media updates. So you can follow us at Cin Cabinet Curio on Twitter, at Cincy Cabinet of Curiosities on Instagram. And of course, we are dying to hear your own hometown haunts. So please send them to hometownhauntedmail at gmail.com. We're an official podcast that can be heard wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to see us while we're doing the show, like right now, you can watch the video feed on YouTube. Find us by searching Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities. Please rate and review us there so other spooky history lovers like yourself can find us. Link in the show notes. We have some show news. Thank you to everyone who submitted stories for this year's Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities Anthology. It will be issue number three, and my oh my, did we get a lot of proposals. I am going through them right now. We look forward to announcing the artists later this month in March 2022. You can hear me, Kat, speak at UC University of Cincinnati's Como University on March 15th, 2022 from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The cost is $39, but it includes copies of both anthologies, issues one and two, and the opportunity to talk to, opportunity to, after the talk, oh my gosh, words, for me to sign them. The class includes ghost stories, the te- techniques of how I find and research all these new and old ghost stories, and a process of sharing them through the art of sequential art. So you can still register, I tried today, at uh, the uc.edu link that we'll have in their show notes. And also, please wear a mask during the class since I have a yet-to-be-vaccinated toddler at home. Thank you, and I hope to see you next week. Wow, that has come up very quickly. We also want to take a minute to send our support to the people of Ukraine and those who live in Kharkiv, our sister city to Cincinnati. Uh, Write your representatives and senators to allow refugees into the country uh, to help the humanitarian crisis. Hmm, Got a little flaclump there. Also, there are a number of charities to support everything from Doctors Without Borders to UNICEF. There is even a, um, Christina is adding it right now. Uh, Was it the world? I'm going to bring Christina on. Christina, what charities have you been supporting? Uh, The World Central Kitchen. And I also have a link that I'm going to put in the show notes that's supposed to help with animals that have been displaced from their owners. It's the um, Ukraine um, Humane Society. And um, I was just about to paste that in. Um, So both of those are good charities. There's also a couple charities where you can actually donate to people that are crossing the border so they can get money. um, And it doesn't necessarily go to a huge organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's also the International Fund for Animal Welfare just moved a bunch of lions out of the zoo from Ukraine. I did hear about the zoo. Yeah, Yeah, it's really tragic. Oh my goodness, zoos and aquariums always during wartime get forgotten and then it gets awkward when there's lions running around the middle of a war zone. So they were moved safely. They're all kind of shell-shocked, but Mm -hmm. they're okay. So yes, go donate to your Mm. charity of choice we'll have a couple links a friend of mine from the ukraine that um lives in texas she's organized a couple of the women's art retreats that i've gone on and Mm -hmm. she has been really good at at finding really good agencies that actually the money goes directly to the people that need it rather than like huge 
um, you know, organizations where you don't know how much actually ends up helping the people that are in need. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, we'll have all that information in our show notes and also in our Facebook group, which is Hometown Haunts, which I believe I forgot to mention earlier. But thank you, Christina. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Back into the shadows you have gone. All right. So our guests tonight are talking about the Cincinnati Art Club, and we're very excited to have them jo join us on the show. So our first guest is Kay Wurz. Born in Chicago, she resides here in Cincinnati, Ohio. She has a Bachelor's of Arts from Xavier University and completed post-grad work in Europe in drawing and painting. I am looking forward to hearing about those adventures. Initially working in, oh, it's a word, Kawa, oh, she is going to correct me on this, Klawazane, yeah, enamel. Kay was included in the Ohio Designer Craftsman Marketing Program. Through this catalog, she was chosen to create special gifts for the Ohio governor to present to foreign dignitaries. Also, I'm interested about hearing about that. Currently, she has been creating and teaching watercolor. Her style is described as calligraphic. She is a signature member of the Cincinnati Art Club and served as president from 2008 to 2010. She is a member of the Ohio Watercolor Society. Kay has served as chairman of the board of the Duvenick Association, an affiliate group of the Cincinnati Art Museum. She received Illustrator of the Year in 2012 and in 2013 in a national art competition, Art Comes Alive. She receives many awards in the Fusion Online competitions and Contemporary Arts Gallery Online as well. In 2012 and in 2016, she had a painting selected and purchased by the Cincinnati Insurance Company as their annual report covers. She was commissioned to create paintings for the Liberty Township Children's Hospital. She has a copper enamel installation in four churches in Cincinnati and one in Pennsylvania. Kay currently teaches art classes for the University of Cincinnati's Coming University program. Kay is married to Don Wurz, a business entrepreneur, and has two grown sons, both professionals, and four grandchildren who inspire her every day. You can find more of her work at kaywurzfineart.com. Also, that will be in the show notes. Our other guest is Marlene Steele, who graduated from the Art Academy in Cincinnati, majoring in painting. She paints portraits, figures, and landscapes in a fresh painterly style and has won recognition for art, her artwork in all media, including oil, pastel, watercolor, and charcoal, such as the Individual Excellence Grant by the Ohio Arts Council for 2019. The she was also a courtroom artist since 2004, established a regional reputation licensing visual images to media as well as to private commissions. I know Jen and I are interested in the courtroom artist work. That That's really interesting. She also owns Steel Studios, accepting commissions in portrait, figure, and landscape, professional studio leasing property. She has the memberships and affiliations with the Portrait Society of America, Art Ambassador to Ohio, an international organization of portrait and figurative artists, Southeastern Pastel Society, Georgia, the Cincinnati Art Club signature member, vice president on, on the board of trustees, exhibition chair since 2016, and the Greater Cincinnati Calligraphers Guild, founded in 1980, not 1880, we'll get to that century in a minute, Regional Teaching Guild with continuous programming since 1980, founded and honorary member in an artist in residence, the University Club of Cincinnati from 2015 to 2017. She also does teaching and outreach programs at the Taft Art Museum, the artist's eye tour of current exhibition with the current ex exhibition in a new light which I believe started February 12th, 2022, and also the Taft Museum of Art Artists Research Reaching Classroom, the ARC. Um, she has worked as fi for 15 years as a presenter, living artist who work demonstrates a vis viable relationship to the Taft Museum of Art collection. The program reaches area high school students on the cusp of choosing career paths, working with high school art department staff to encourage its interest in the arts through professional interaction. You can find more of her work at marlenesteelfineart.com. And of course, that link will also be in the show notes. Wow. My. So accomplished. I am humbled reading all of this because I just know Japanese. And that's my skill. So that is so amazing that these two women have gone through and done all these awards. 
for those of you who are curious how we came to the Cincinnati Art Club. This is by way of Henry Fannery and our old friend Lafcardio Hearn, who we had a few episodes ago. And if you didn't catch that episode, Hearn and Fannery worked together to make the Ye Giga Lamps zine here in Cincinnati back in the late 1880s. And Fannery would later become a the president or one of the presidents, one of the many presidents of the Cincinnati Art Club, in addition to becoming a prominent American painter. If you want to know more about Lafcardio Hearn, just check at the beginning of the season. We have all about his lit literary adventures there. So with all of that said, I am bringing on Marlene and Kay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I... I'm just amazed of re reading all of that and the adventures you've had. I just have to go with the first question of how did you get into art? And either one of you can start. <laughs> uh, well, my mother was an oil portrait painter. And when we were children, she somehow managed to find the money to invite a professional artist, classical artist into our home to give the children art lessons and oh, wow. she loved art. She felt that was very important. And it turned out my sister and I both became professional cloisonne enamel artists. And my brother was an industrial designer, but we all knew how to draw. So oh, wow. it was very industrious of her and it was important to her. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning of it. I'm interested in, in the cloisonne, which I butchered yeah. masterfully <laughs> earlier. Ooh. Um, because of just how technical that has to be working with all the mm -hmm. small metals and creating all those enamel, enamel, enamel pins or enamel pieces of art. They aren't These, just pins. Uh, you can tell I've been designing pins recently because I'm like, I know. <laughs> First is acrylic. It's a lot pins. of detail work. It's a yeah, lot it's of detail lot of work. So mm -hmm. Marlene, how did you get into art? And also you are muted. There. there we go. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> uh, uh, I was raised in a uh, German Catholic parish in Northern Kentucky, St. Augustine's. And uh, it's a beautiful church, which is uh, decorated highly with uh, painted compositions of the different uh, stories from the Bible and the life of Christ. And, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed uh, sometimes copying those, drawing the statues. And, uh, and working with my crayons a lot that my parents noticed um, how much I love to draw. And so they sent me to a neighborhood studio um, and the woman, Eileen McCarthy, was actually a student of Dubinek when she was a young girl at the Art okay. Academy. So um, I took classes with her for several years. Oh, nice. And uh, that was uh, the beginning of my foundation of uh, drawing and uh, pastel and oil mm -hmm. painting. Wow. Oil painting, I can never get my mind around. I've always been able to do inks in 2D, but not oil painting. I don't, I don't know why. So it's slippering everywhere. Like watercolor, I'm fine with. Oh, but wow. oil painting, I'm always impressed with. I tried it and I was like, nope. Not me. <laughs> no. But it is it is a very forgiving uh, medium. Uh, yeah. I think I think um, you know it, as opposed to watercolor, which is which is uh, um, not easy to backtrack. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> it's not easy. Kay does beautiful, colorful watercolors, and Thank so you. it's yeah it's very impressive when you see how transparently. Uh, beautiful they are yeah oh thank you that is so kind that did... watercolor does not forgive it stains and once mm. it's stained you kind of start over it mm. can't fix it without it looking like you fixed it mm -hmm. yeah it's, i use watercolors for coloring comic pages so okay. yeah yeah i understand how unforgiving it can be and also when you have the wrong type of ink that you've used and you've laid down all your ink and um, then you use a watercolor that blends with black real well, and you just get a muddy mm. mess. And you're like, what have yeah. I done? What have mm -hmm. I done with my life? Why didn't I use the waterproof ink? 
Oh, silly me. So I'm always curious. It happens. I'm curious. How did you get into oil and watercolor painting? What attracted you to those mediums? Uh, This was um, Miss McCarthy's uh, natural progression from the drawing, from the basic drawing and charcoal. Mm Because I drew in charcoal for about a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything that we drew in her classes was from life. There were always still life studies or drawing out the window. And um, or in and it was um, it was a constant reiteration of how to see properly, how to create volume and um, and capture light in uh, in our work. And it was um, so after after many studies in black and white, which my mother would say, when are you going to do color? You know, it was, you know, we do we do one daffodil and then we do two daffodils and they were black and white daffodils. I mean, so it was really great when, when um, Eileen told my, told my mother to uh, get her, her daughter, a, uh, uh, a box of pastels. And, and, and then I learned to use uh, the pastels and mix the colors optically right on the paper. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that was the start of my use of color, it, it, and the thing was that uh, the box of pastels were uh, they were Rembrandt's, mm-hmm. which is a great workhorse uh, style of pastel. It's not too soft, uh, and and it's also uh, uh, the colors were um, natural colors in that they weren't fluorescent. Oh yeah, colors. And mm-hmm. so learning how to mix those colors optically by applying them to a paper um, was the f- preamble for mixing colors on the color palette in an oil for oil. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, so it was, it, it was like pre, you know, so you're, it's, it's changing from the point to the brush. Mm-hmm. And, and that was, uh, that was really constructive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you, Kay? Well, actually, I started doing the um, my exhibition as a senior in college. I did all cloisonné and all enamel. Limoges, those are different types. Those mm-hmm. were all developed back in the Byzantine era mm-hmm. when churches were hiring artists to do color when they did not have a window. Now, they had the stained glass windows, which was great. But when they wanted to put color behind an altar or on a wall that had no window, the cloisonne enamels were perfect because you could make them look like a stained glass, but you're applying color, you're firing, you're using the fine wire to create Mm -hmm. that uh, stained glass look. But you were then allowed to do objects like the um, tabernacles that had color. And so that was a big uh, deal back in the Byzantine time. So um, in college, I learned that and loved it, absolutely loved it. It's got a lot of um, little wrenches in the plan. If You know, I burned my fingers at first touching things that were 1,500 degrees. And you have to remember not to do certain things. Oh but once you get the hang of it, it's really fun. You're working with powdered glass that's finer than powdered sugar. So you, you use the wire, the cloisonne wire to mask, like kind of mark your, your drawing, do your drawing, take the wire with the tweezers, match it to your drawing. Then you fill in those areas with color, but each color goes into the kiln separately. They have different firing times. So you have to remember the golds are soft, the blues are harder. So don't do gold first because that will disappear. And if you leave it in the kiln two seconds too long, the whole thing melts into black. Oh, so wow. So there's a lot of little drawbacks. <laughs> but as <laughs> I say, once you get into understanding what you don't do, right. it's really beautiful. So I did that for a while, and I joined the Ohio Designer Craftsman, doing it on a wholesale level for galleries around the country. And I was doing it so much that one day I couldn't get out of bed. Because you're bent over, you're you're working over your work. And my doctor said, whatever you're doing, stop. And I said, stop? 
-hmm. So I, my mother at the time was taking classes from Ray Luce in watercolor. She wanted to switch from oil to watercolor. She says, oh, why don't you go to watercolor? You can stand up and paint and your back will be fine, which is what I did. And then I signed in and got a job at Baker Hunt teaching watercolor. Loved it, just absolutely loved it. So I have a great love for both. I, I still do commissions in the enamels, but I do love the watercolor. And the early masters would go out in the field and sketch and do watercolor and then come back into their studio and turn that into their oil paintings because mm -hmm. it was quicker it was less hassle taking all their oils out there mm -hmm. so but i i do admire marlene's gorgeous gorgeous pastel work she is magic to do Thank that you. in a courtroom when people are moving every second she's awesome oh, oh yes she's quite a lovely talent yeah well thank you thank you uh, I wanted to. I wanted to say that it's kind of interesting how both of us uh, found directions towards our work in 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 ecclesiastical environments. Yes, yes. It's it's very interesting uh, because mm -hmm. I I love the color that I saw in church and mm -hmm. um, and and also the music, but it yes. was it was just uh, that's that's a very interesting uh, mm -hmm. alliance there. And um, uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? I agree totally that uh, that watercolor and pastel make really great portable, um, yes, portable mediums, and you can you can work outside and do things um, uh, kind of quickly without a lot of equipment, mm -hmm. and and then do the oil paintings in the studio, and and I've done uh, lots of work that way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, exactly. And how did you both get mm -hmm. involved with the art club of Cincinnati? Okay, you were involved way before me. <laughs> well, yes, I was. I'm older than you are, Marley. No, <laughs> but no, I, that's not the point. Originally, no. someone invited me to the art club. Oh, okay, <laughs> but someone invited me to the club to see what it was like, and I went. And it was very interesting. They had a program once a month where they bring in an artist to do a demo. They would bring them in from local or they would get a national artist, bring them in. Fascinating to watch an artist work. They didn't have to really say too much because you can learn so much just watching. And I thought, oh, this is really the, the genuine article here. This is great. So I joined. And my other motive was I found out if you could, you have to be vetted. You can be an associate, you can be a member, you don't have to be an artist, but there is a panel that you can bring your art in and they decide if you are on a professional enough level, you can become, instead of an associate member, you can be an active member. So mm -hmm. I thought I'm going to do that because if you reach that level, you can have your own show, you can book the club and have your own exhibit which is what I wanted to do. So when I did join a couple of years later, they asked me to join the board and I thought, oh my gosh, I, I don't know. So I did and they gave me the little jobs. I was secretary and then I was exhibition chair, vice president, and then ultimately president. I got to know all the members and it was just great. I loved it. But I, want, I think the good old boys, it was basically a men's club. And in 1985, Martha Weber was the first female that became president. So she kind of broke the ice. The club actually needed revenue. So they opened it from an all men's club to a women's club in 85. She became president and it's a two year stint. Beyond that, Judith Barnett, a few years later was president. And then they were grooming me to be president. And I think they wanted me to be on the board to experience these different committee chairs, so which was mm -hmm. fine, that was good. But I, I enjoyed it, I loved it. And my board, I talked them into changing our title of associate and active to associate and signature member, because mm -hmm. I looked around the country and all the clubs had signature members. And that was the same thing, you're a more professional member and you are vetted, 
you bring pieces in, a panel looks at them mm -hmm. to see if you understand drawing, color principle, if you have a style, they're looking for something that's identifiable. They kind of don't want to see everything that you can do. They want to mm -hmm. see what you're really good at. So I thought that would be, you know, this is good. Let's call ourselves signature members. So my board agreed. And we did a few other things. Once you get ladies on board, you get a few things done. <laughs> we decided our entry hall was just a pair of glass doors that looked into the building. And the board said, well, why don't we put a changeable art out there? So they realized we're an art place. And that's that was a great idea. I, I had a very good board. Equal amounts of men and women, which was very, very nice. We all got along great. And we kept the tradition going of having uh, an artist appear once a month. We would pay them to come and do a demo. And it was wonderful. It's the real thing. It really is classic art, fine art. And that's what I liked about it. Okay. Yeah, that and sounds And now Marlene remarkable. is the active exhibition chair and vice president. So she could fill you in on what's happening right now. Nice. Uh, I, I think it's interesting. Um, I joined uh, because previously I was uh, working with the Women's Club when they had a studio at the Pendleton and they conducted their figure drawing classes at the Pendleton. Mm -hmm. And I, I, was, um, I had taken over the um, uh, uh, responsibility for the figure drawing model hiring and, and uh, conducting the sessions. And so um, when they moved, uh, when they closed that studio and moved away to um, not very far to Marimont, um, uh, I looked around for a drawing session that would be closer to home and not, not a uh, too long of a drive and everything. So uh, the art club is, uh, featuring that as part of the membership fee, which I think is is a great uh, advantage for the for the membership, e either class if you're a, an associate or a signature member. So um, that was the reason I joined the art club. Um, only I don't know, maybe seven years ago or so, mm -hmm. and um, to to be able to continue the uh, k grooming my drawing skills and staying active, um, it's important to be able to draw the figure fluidly. And this is, this is one uh, very important uh, component of my abilities to work in court, mm -hmm. is to draw at a constant pace, you know, and, and, and compose in a fluid environment. So, um, so it's very important to stay in practice. And I love it, I love drawing. And I, I love the figure. I love the human figure. Yeah. So, um, so I think it's great that we have the lobby feature uh, because it, rep the, you know, having visible work uh, across from those two glass doors uh, right there on Parkside Place is really um, a way to, to bring people into the club to, to show them what we're about. And the, and the artists are usually signature members who have mm -hmm. reached a, a certain professional level mm -hmm. and, and we, uh, and, and when they volunteer to show their work in the lobby, it is a um, representation of what our, what our membership uh, does to the general public. So I thank you for establishing that Kay, because that was, that was well, a great it, it was, idea. It was a group effort. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's still but it's I under think your leadership. Right. Well, it was fun to do and we had a good group, but I do think the sketch groups that the club offers are so invaluable. If you can master the human figure, you can draw anything. And it's, it's twice a week. I don't know of anybody that offers that in their membership. And I think it's quite a valuable piece of the, the club that I certainly. I, Absolutely. So, so we do we do a portrait every other week and we do figure every other week. So oh, it's wow. one week of portrait two two sessions and one week of figure two sessions. Oh wow. And 
basically this club has been active since 1890. And then you also have the mm -hmm. Women's Club, Art Club of Cincinnati. It was 1892, if I was looking at the history mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they're basically what's remarkable is through the Civil War, through World War I, through the Great Depression, through World War II, through Vietnam, Korea, mm -hmm. COVID, this club <laughs> has continued to chug along helping people master fine art. And that's what really is remarkable and the strength of community, really. Absolutely. That's what I enjoyed is meeting other artists and discussing art in a, a very serious way. And yet you can escape the world. And we're so lucky we can do these things to, to save our sanity. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a thread that has kept everybody going. It's amazing that these 13 men decided to group together back in 1890. They felt it was important too. Mm -hmm. So we are very lucky that it's still surviving today. And that one paper mache dog, which is an <laughs> interesting little history tip, Kay. Can you explain yes, the, the, the dog? Th the 13 members, John Reddick, um, Farney, Sharp, uh, Twatman, they all got together to form this group and they were, they said, we're just going to establish this, but 13 is an unlucky number. So one of them created a paper mache dog and decided that would be the 14th member. And then they were officially, okay, we are in good standing. We've got 14 members to open the club. And the funny thing is, I've heard this from the past, that sometimes that dog would be moved in different places when you come into the club. It wouldn't necessarily always be in the same spot you left. So that could be the ghost of the club. I don't know about that because I wasn't around at that time, but it was a funny story. That is really funny. Do you still have the paper mache dog? Yes, we do. <gasps> yeah. it, it lives in the storage room. Oh. It's in the storage room. It's yeah. very at least delicate. it's safe. It's safe. Oh. No, but some, sometimes it's in the vault. I saw it in the vault the oh, other good. day. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a good spot for him. <laughs> oh, wow. So, this is a history lover. I'm jazzed to hear that this is the, the dog see, just, lives. Yeah. Yes, yes. But they were a group of very talented men. Uh -huh. And, of course, I think it was um, Barney that did the American Indian. Is that correct, Marlene? Oh, uh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. And they were very accomplished artists. And I knew they they felt that they were coming together in a very important way to keep this fine art alive. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful to them for doing that. Because they yeah. had some tough time. Yes. Of course. And, and they, they uh, did more than just uh, gather. I mean, they, they demonstrated, yeah. they critiqued each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. And um, and that uh, grouping around uh, Duvenek and Farney uh, and Sharp, who were you know highly recognized artists, uh, this was uh, and Duvenek in his time was one of the most oh. sought after teachers Absolutely. in in the era when he mm -hmm. came back from uh, from Germany mm -hmm. and uh, located here. It was a it was a very uh, tumultuous time in his life. But because uh, he had just lost his wife of two years, and mm -hmm. and uh, but he came back to Cincinnati um, to to teach and uh, and to rebuild his his professional life. Um, I think I think the association thrived on their um, on their um, their need to their need to work together and be uh -huh. and be um, uh, and to consult with each other and have these friendships. Absolutely. Oh yeah, and every really good healthy artist collective is able to meet and share ideas and help improve one another, not tear each other down, but give some constructive critiques over like, hey, maybe try using that color instead of. Mm -hmm. Mauve mm -hmm. or whatever. It, it's I don't know why mauve. That's true. That's true. 
<laughs> very true. No, yeah. no, I, I, I have learned more from other artists that I, that you know, even in commercial jobs, you know, working at Gibson Greetings as a lettering artist, I'd learned more from other people working in the department mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in the creative department than, than you can ever find in books. You know, mm -hmm. there is that life experience exchange. Mm -hmm. And that, that is uh, just, it's just like, it's just like your daily bread. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, you, you grow so much when you associate with other artists because you're learning from their real life experiences. And, and, um, and every artist benefits by that. You know, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't contradict the fact that we are uh, solitary individuals in the act of creation. You know, when we're when we're making our work in the studio, I mean, you you really kind of have to um, close out uh, distractions, uh, concentrate, be um, you know, kind of turn inward and create the work. But um, but it's but practicing with other artists and um, and going to a critique group because we have. We have the art club has a critique group that meets once a month now, and you can bring what you're working on to the group and and have um, have a um, constructive conversation about the perceptions of the painting or the artwork and and maybe what is what is um, uh, not quite uh, working mm -hmm. or, or and ask questions and and see what someone else with a different set of eyes can contribute to your uh, critical analysis. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that's a very, that is also, besides the sketch group, that is also a very, um, very, val very valuable experience. And then we, we have, we have exhibition programming that are club sponsored. So there are, there are no fees for those uh, opportunities to show your work um, in um, class, you know, like signature or associate class shows or shows that are uh, media themed or uh, um, or group themed like sketch group or critique group or the dog, D-A-W-G, which is digital art, art working group. So it's um, it's very it's been very uh, expandable mm -hmm. uh, experience for the membership. Yeah. It does. I do wonder, do you have it open to all ages? Do you have s specific age sets that can participate? I know, I think the club is 18 and over. But do you have like kids groups or anything? Uh, we have, um, we have student membership, mm -hmm. as well as associate and signature. Um, I, we don't have, I, I and probably should edit this out. We don't have youth okay. groups mm -hmm. um okay. we do uh, offer my... do offer um a competition once a year for high school students high where school. we designate a place where they can go and sketch or paint one day and they bring their work back to the club and then we offer a scholarship for the first three best pieces that we have we have a panel that decides what looks really good. And so we're trying to reach out to um, high school seniors that mm -hmm. would like to okay. pursue art. And that's okay. a very valuable. And then that's those a, pieces that, that, oh, go ahead, Marlene. No, you go ahead. You're describing it really well. Well, it's just, we take the, the four pieces that, that are the, the very best, first, second, third, fourth, and then we display them in the art museum for about a month and a half so that people can visit and see what was going on and how they've accomplished this. And this is very exciting. And they, they make a little bit of money on their prize money and it helps them with their future choice in where they wanna go beyond high school. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a reaching out that we've done for high schoolers because they're pretty serious at that point. Yes. I remember being a high schooler and into art and every, and my friends and I were very serious. We we're going to really mm -hmm. make it, but yes, yeah, scholarships were very much needed to be able to get any money that we could get to go and do 
go to school and buy our art supplies and all of that exactly. very much needed. So it's good to hear the art club is participating in yeah. events like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and this then Marlene is, is, is opening a new exhibit for women. This is go ahead, Marlene, and yeah. explain about the women's exhibit. Um, really yes. exciting. Could I could I add one more thing that might sure. be relevant about the um, the um, high school play? It's it's a high school plain air competition. So mm -hmm. they have to draw on the spot in in different sites, That's and true. we have uh, we have had uh, a real variety. But this year, interestingly enough, uh, we are citing our competition at Gorman Farms, which has beautiful sunflowers mm. and sunflowers, uh, fields of sunflowers. And sunflower, the sunflower is the national flower of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. and I, th I think that is so interesting. Uh, so we hope to have a really wonderful exhibition. It'll be uh, the first Sunday in October okay. at the club in the Wessel Gallery. All right. So if we add that, maybe. Nice. Perfect. Yeah. And um, then it... the current, did you have a question about that? No, I was just saying that the timing is so serendipitous just to mm -hmm. go with the current events going on with the world and, and the sunflowers. Mm -hmm. But no, I was going to say, please tell us about the latest exhibit that you were about to tell us about. Very, very good. Um, <laughs> March is Women's Month nationally. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in designing the calendar this year, I thought it would be um, an interesting inaugural exhibition of the, of the women membership uh, of the art club and, and to, to go back and find out who these women were who joined in when the club first opened the membership uh, to, to women. And uh, uh, so this has been challenging in some ways because this was um, uh, women who were working in the late 70s, early 80s, and, and also um, people have moved and, you know, life, Life has moved everyone through different phases and uh, eras. And so uh, we hope that this exhibition will be a, uh, a coming home, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, for the, for the uh, women membership. And, and it, it is the first time ever that a show of just the women of the club has been organized. Oh, wow. That's so, really good. I, I think it'll be, I, I, I really hope that this happens, but um, it would, there are still three living, there are three women presidents and three living women presidents. And uh, I'm hoping that we have a historic moment at the reception where all three of them will be at the club together and, uh, and meet in mm -hmm. front of their paintings. Oh, that would be wonderful. And, and if I read my notes correctly, we went from the Cincinnati Art Club having zero female members mm -hmm. to being over 50% mm -hmm. female now. Mm -hmm. This is, yes, yeah. this is true. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, yay. Mm -hmm. Go, go <laughs> us. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is, it's approximately 55% membership now. Oh, wow. And, and we do great work on the board. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, um, um, and we and they are wonderful volunteers, it, you know. A club, you know, a nonprofit club like this runs on the blood of its volunteers, and it's just very, very important that the membership supports the activities with their own, with their work, with their time, and their resources. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. we are very lucky because in this day and age, it's difficult to get volunteers. So people have to be really into wanting to do this absolutely yes. oh yeah so the current goals with the art club is to um, diversify the membership mm -hmm. and also to diversify the mediums that people are working in um, and recognize recognizing um, different mediums besides oil and watercolor okay. so uh, photography uh, digital art um, fiber art sculpture and um, even cloisonne. I mean, we haven't had a show about it, but I think I think it's very important to um, put so many 
uh, bring so many different mediums together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the shows that we do. Mm-hmm. I, I do have to ask this only because I'm a part of the community, but have you considered comic books? We're a pop art. <laughs> Graphic novels. Graphic I think, novels. I think it's great. <laughs> it's I, beyond, I, I it's like more to call them. And capes. It's more than Marvel and DC. We have yes, a very strong definitely. independent comic group. And it's a drawing opportunity. Yes, to right. Draw these great drawings that uh, with blams and kabams and everything in them. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful. It, it's it just is. a fun and, and introduction. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. figure too, yeah. Oh with yeah, plot, right. with stories, yes. with uh, yep. with uh, expressions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exactly. you're talking about figure art and knowing landscape art, and those are just hallmarks. You have to know how to do figure expression before you can oh, yeah. exaggerate it for comics, or it's not going to be convincing. It's going to look messy. So I know when I teach how to draw comics classes, I'm like, first, you have to know your foundational art. You can't be drawing an incredible stretching character if you don't know how arm joints work. Like, <laughs> so, or just landscapes. Very true. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's interesting talking to the students and my, the students I've taught in the past are every, are dot in ages from middle school to 60 plus. And they're just like, but comics, they're so cartoony. And I'm like, yes, but you need to know your fundamentals before you can become cartoony. So absolutely fun, fun things. So I just say, sure. think about it. You don't have to answer, but think about it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, and it, I think we've talked about all of our main points. I think I'll bring Christina and Jen on to spice up our conversation because we've okay. hit a natural point to bring them on oh christina's really eager she's like bam i'm here it's christina and oh i was gonna say do you have any legendary stories from the art club a club over 100 like are there any like uh legends that travel around like stories that people kind of tell when people first join the group i mean it doesn't be secret stories well i'll tell my little my little story um and, and this this happened now i've been at um exhibition chair now for this is my third year Kate knows how 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 the um, appointments on on the uh, board run, and um, so I was waiting one day about two years ago for a volunteer to come and to come and help me do something at the club, like put up a show or something. And um, the the interesting thing uh, that was that I, I I come into the club by myself, I lock the door behind me, hmm. okay? Because I don't want anyone to walk in. We're not open. I'm, I'm waiting to do some work. And so, uh, and you can see from the door, you can see straight down the hallway uh, into the kitchen. So I was standing in the kitchen and I was browsing a book and it's keeping an eye for my volunteer to come. And, um, and uh, out of the corner of my eye, I was looking down at the counter and looking in. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a figure um, in the door area. And, and I thought, oh, that must be Margaret. I'll, I'll go and let her in. So I, when I walked to the front of the, of the, towards the door, there was nobody there. Ooh. And so in thinking back, I realized that it was a gray figure that had moved across the hallway entrance door, not outside on the glass door. And that particular part of the club was the original door. The um, lobby was added on outside the original wall. Mm. So this person went from right from the doorway into the gallery, into the lobby, from right to left, hmm. and and it was um, a a gray figure. It had no kind of dimension. Um, it seemed like it had kind of a belly, <laughs> and and it and the head was not defined by the skull. It had kind of like a slouch hat on. It's the you know there were mm-hmm. shapes around the head that were not skull like. Mm-hmm. So I thought you know I. 
and it, when I when I perceived it, I didn't I didn't think much about it. I was just waiting for a volunteer. And um, but a few minutes later, Margaret showed up, and she was outside, not inside. And so I let her in, and um, I I kind of realized that I'd seen in it a ghost. I had seen an interior figure inside the club. Oh, wow. And I, I just, I, I wasn't scared, but I was just kind of, it's kind of an interesting experience. Yeah. And how old is that particular part of the building? Well, we have, we have a, we have a watercolor that we exhibited just recently that shows the site as a vacant property hmm. and the watercolor, uh, the person making the watercolor looked up the hill and painted actually the house next door that is the very next building going up the hill on Parkside Place. And on in the bottom left corner of the, of the watercolor is part of a sign that says future home of the Cincinnati Art Club. And so uh, what's also cool about that watercolor is there's a there's a uh, the bottom of the paper has all the signatures of the people who were members the the membership that um, at the time of that watercolor that was made and so it's it's just I I don't know how I don't know exactly when the building was built mm -hmm. but it was built in phases so mm -hmm. there was the original building and then a renovation occurred that they added on the um, the outside lobby. They extended mm -hmm. uh, the front of the building about ten foot or so, mm -hmm. and and added the glass doors that you see today on the oh, front wow. of the building. Yeah, well, that's really neat. That's a good story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't always. Would that be considered a shadow person when she saw that person go by? Oh no, that's just, just an apparition. Uh, that's just an apparition. Your, oh, <laughs> that's an apparition. Surprise. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh just <laughs> no color. Not to go all egon like just the gray and it moved, it just moved horizontally. Mm -hmm. It didn't walk mm -hmm. like like a movement like a walk. It just yeah. moved kind of horizontally float. across. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I was totally blown away. I was just wow. Yeah. yeah. It's so very what about you, Kay? Oh. Okay, Dubinek and another artist, I don't know which one, were painting in the Clement art museum Barnhorn. at midnight Clement with whiskey. Okay. Yes, and it wasn't with whiskey. They were drinking, and the painting is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they were both painting, I don't know, some figures, but it wasn't very good, and I'm sure they were not very proud of it. But there is an evidence of that painting somewhere that is not very good. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's a great story. It's that's hiding somewhere in the archives. Yeah, it, maybe it's in that vault you talked about, uh -huh. Marlene. Yeah, I've seen yeah, it. Maybe. Well, uh, we probably should wrap it up before Kay yeah. loses all juice in her phone. Yes. Uh, is there any closing statements that either of you have? We've really enjoyed having you on the show. It's been so interesting. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, the conversational uh, of mm -hmm. this th whole aspect, it's been really, really wonderful to, mm -hmm. to meet everyone on, online and, and have this personal conversation. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another wonderful episode of the Cincinnati Cabin of Curiosities presents the Hometown Haunts podcast. I am your host, Kat Cloco, along with me, Christina Wald and Jen Kohler. You can follow us on on social media at Sin Cabinet Curio on Twitter, at Cincy Cabinet of Curiosities on Instagram. You can also send us your hometown haunts. We're dying to hear them at hometownhauntedmail at gmail.com and join our Facebook group, Hometown Haunts, to talk to other fringe history and spooky story lovers just like yourself. Also, just for all of your listeners, you can follow K Words at kwordsfineart.com and Marlene Steele at marlenesteelfineart.com. So thank you for joining us. It was wonderful. Good night and stay spooky.